Evet. Welcome to you. Elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin. With the support of our Sheikh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us another week, another Thursday, another Juma, another Zikir, another chance for us to remember Him, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't think that the Zikir that we have just done is something. It is nothing. It is not worth to be presented to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not worth to be presented to the divine presence of a holy prophet. But with the blessings of our Shaykh, inshallah, it will be accepted. We are not those ones who are proud and arrogant and depending on our worship. Worship, it is an obligation. Worship gives so much blessings, but we are not depending on the worship. We're depending on Allah. We're depending on Holy Prophet, والسلام, His Shafat, His intercession. And we are hoping for the intercession of our Shaykh. That is the most important thing. Man falls into this heedless and headless station because he's only depending on himself. Whereas, in reality, he's only a prisoner between two breaths. If Allah does not give permission, he cannot take a breath in. If Allah does not give the permission, he cannot take the breath out. If Allah does not give him the permission, he cannot even enter into the bathroom and to finish whatever there is put into his body. The most beautiful things that he has put into his body that takes hours, months, sometimes years to prepare, but it comes out from his body in the most dirty, in the most smelly, in the most poisonous way that no one can bear to look or to smell. Understand what man, if he's still stuck in the animal's uh, station and he has not reached to the level of perfection, he has not reached to the insan kamil station, if he has not reached to the station where he came from, which is a paradise station, that is what is going to happen. May Allah make us to become Ahli Jannat here on earth before we pass, inshallah, with the shafat of our Prophet and with the blessings of our Shaykh. Eruz billah min shaytan rajim, bismillah rahman rahim, dastur, madad. Ya sahibu sahib, shabrin kubisir, abani, madad. Bismillah rahman rahim. Tarikatina sohba fil hayri min jamia. The Peer of our tariqat, our way, tariqat means way, Shahi Naqshubandi is saying, our way continues with association. And goodness, benefit comes from being in jamaat. Jamaat. So many may say we want to break away from the Jamaat. It's okay. You are free to do that for a certain time. As you like. We are not an authority on you. But Shai Naqshbandi is saying goodness comes from the Jamaat. He did not say goodness comes from breaking away, being alone, being independent, being rebellious. And he is saying that because Holy Prophet is saying, Dini Nasihat, our religion, the religion, it is advice. Shah Naqshbandi is saying, we are not prophets, we don't give advice, but we give sohbet. We form an association where one speaks and the rest listens. One speaks who has been given the authority, one speaks who has been given the knowledge. The knowledge does not come from him too. He has been granted that knowledge. That one, for today he may speak. Tomorrow may be someone else. The next day may be someone else. Nobody in this way of Allah is indispensable. We cannot claim this way depends on us. And if we 
stop this if I stop this, or you, or whoever it is who thinks that they are indispensable, that they are irreplaceable, that they are unique and special in their role because they say, if I don't do this, everything is going to fall. If I say, if I don't continue this, everything is going to fall, my faith is in a big question mark. Because I'm saying I'm something, everything is depending on me, then where is the faith on Allah then? Isn't this way Allah's way? Isn't this way the Holy Prophet's way? Isn't our Shaykh controlling us? Controlling everything that is happening here. Making things to continue with his blessings. So what right do I or you or anyone to say, well, I have to do this because I'm the only one who can do this. Nobody else can do this. All you are idiots. You don't know what you're doing. Why do I know what I'm doing? And if I don't do, everything is going to fail. No. You have to learn faith that time. Listen to me. You have to understand. Start from scratch again. Faith. Don't look at yourself for something. We are trying to be nothing. Yes, responsibility is given to us. Yes, we have to do. But never we are going to say, if I don't do this, then this way, this world, everything is going to fall. Then that time you are discounting Allah. You are discounting Prophet. You are discounting Awliya Allah and our Shaykhs, the friends of Allah. The saints of Allah. You are discounting them. You are saying it's me. Ego is saying it's me again. I am important. No. Billions came before you and me. Billions may come after you or me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, If you cannot carry what I've given you, I will raise a people that maybe you're going to be enemies to them. Maybe you're going to look down on them, but they're going to be better than you. And they're going to carry that better than you. So, we must not think that we are something. Because this way will continue. Tariqat is going to continue with me or without me. With you or without you. Don't think we are the only ones. Don't think we are doing something. We are not. If you say, that yes, we are. If I don't do this, everything is going to fall. We're going to get into this trouble, this trouble, this trouble. Then you completely, you don't understand how the tariqat is going to work. You think tariqat only came out last century in America? Tariqat has seen so many Americas, so many empires, so many sultans. So, whatever is in our hands, yes. That responsibility, definitely, we have to carry it. We have to do as much as we can. But doing that, we have to follow our role model. We have to follow our guide. We are here following our guide, isn't it? Who is our guide? Ultimately, our guide is Holy Prophet, alayhi salatu wa salam. We are shy and shamed to say our guide is Allah. We are not prophets. To say our guide is Allah. We are not Wahhabi. To say our guide is Allah. We are not shaitan to say our guide is Allah. I only make such that to Allah, not to Adam alayhi salam. Although I know that the secret is in Adam alayhi salam with that knowledge, with that secret, I may complete my knowledge, but I refuse to because that time I'm going to be under his authority. Shaitan understands. He has more knowledge than you or me or everyone put together. Yes. So, our role model, it is our shaykh. And to do things the way that he taught us. To do things, to think, to walk, to sit, to stand, to take care of our children, to pray, to worship, to wash clothes, to cook, to do everything according to his way. Zahir and Batin, according to his way. We are saying that we are trying to be like Sahabi Kiram in the presence of the Holy Prophet. Wasalam. You ever hear any Sahabi Kiram after they met the Holy Prophet Wasalam, and they say, Well, I still love this one, this guide, this teacher, this prophet that I had before. Did you ever hear? In dunya, people understand that very good, very well when it comes to nafs and the dunya. They say, Now you love me, right? You cannot love anyone. 
even if you spend your whole life with that one, but that one just passed, you cannot love that one. Now you have to love me. I must be the only one, isn't it? Isn't it? I must be the only one. So how can it be when we're following that one who is teaching us life and love, our guide, our role model, we say, well, some things I follow him, some things I don't. I love him, but I love so many other teachers, so many other ones too. Hazrati Salman al-Farisi, Karan Zasir, is saying, that he followed so many uh, teachers, so many holy people from different religions that he was following, that they were following the Hanafi way, meaning the, the purified way, uh, Hanifs. But when he found Holy Prophet, he said to us, Salam, do you ever see that he's still going back to the teachings of those ones? No, because he found someone who is completing everything. And in reality, he is the master of the beginning and the end. Say now, walilahirin. What about us now? We know so much Islamic knowledge, huh? Mashallah. We know so much sirah. We know so much history. We know to say we love Prophet. We know we say that we love the companions. But when it comes to their lifestyle, to the way that they love, the way that they live, we say we don't want that. There's one word for that. It's called being a hypocrite. But that word is not a small word in the presence of Allah. That word is the heaviest word. Holy Prophet is saying the hypocrite is going to be in the hell that is lower than the unbelievers. So we need to check that hypocrisy that is in our hearts. That's why we have a sheikh. That's why we have a guide. That's why we have a teacher. To pull out the hypocrisy that we have in our hearts. To teach us, you think you had the faith, it is not a faith. You think you have this, it is not that. You think you have Iman, it is not Iman. Understand that is hypocrisy. Understand that is just excuse. Understand that is arrogance. Understand that is anger. Understand that you are just being ungrateful. Understand you are just being complaining. Understand that you are just being a dragon. Understand that you are saying and claiming that you are following a share for decades, but still if something touches you a little bit, you are ready to blow up the whole world. Then later to say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just venting. After that, I'm okay now. It's like someone coming and when he's upset, he's shooting, killing people. Then when his anger cooled down because he shot people, because he's done damage, to say, now I'm cool. Okay, I'm sorry. Why is everybody so upset? Why are you so upset with me? What did I do? I already said I'm sorry, right? That is how they teach America to be, isn't it? Do as much damage as you want to yourself, to the whole world, then later say, I'm sorry. Then get upset if people don't hug you after that. Don't clean up your mess. No. There's always a price to pay. And the price to pay, to find out and to discover yourself, is your ego. That is the price that you have to pay. Because the ego is the one that is standing in front of us, preventing us from discovering who we are. And preventing us from discovering and understanding our relationship to our Lord. And from knowing our Lord and worshipping Him. Allah, you can never discover Allah. But the drop that you may know of Him, you may worship Him that time. All that, the key is from you too. It is from inside of you. But you cannot do it by yourself. Yes, you have to have a guide. And that guide definitely is going to teach you something you don't know. Definitely in this way, because this way is concentrating on the ego, is going to concentrate on your ego. It's not going to pat you on the back and to say, MashaAllah, such nur coming out from your face. MashaAllah, yesterday I see such high stations that you are coming from. MashaAllah, I see you in a dream, you're here, you're there. He's not going to praise you. That is not the way. That is not this tariqat. It's not the way. That is the tariqat al-aliyah. That is not the way. The way is to concentrate on the ego. And for you to understand what kind of a creature the ego is, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given power to the ego, and the ego is rebelling against Allah. Shaitan disobeyed Allah once. But the ego continues from the day that he was created until the day, 
Either you are going to control it, either you are going to step on it, and it's going to give you that power, either you're going to ride on it, or in this world, or that ego is going to pull you to Jahannam. In that time, it's going to be completely under control by the other ones. You have no part to play in it, but because you did not control it when you had the chance, you're going to pay a heavy price for it too. Because you identified yourself with the ego. You did not identify yourself with the spirit. So you're going to go where the ego is. The ego is to the fire. So, we are watching these days. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We are watching these days how different people, they are behaving. How different people, they are thinking. They are walking, they are living, they are acting. In these days that our Shah has passed, we are watching, we are not saying anything, we are observing, we are taking lesson. We take lesson. Either take lesson or else Allah is going to make you to become a lesson to others. And we are noticing so many things and it is an obligation for us to speak a couple of things for those of us, myself included, it's not you, I'm not saying it's just you, myself included, that may find some benefit in it, that we'll take, inshallah. We are here to continue our chef and his way, uh, not to change it. We are here because we believe in him, because we took bayat with him. We are not saying we are 100% very, very good, best murids, no. We know we don't qualify for that too, but we don't, uh, inshallah, may Allah not put us through the test, we don't doubt that he is our share. We are not taking from anyone else. Sultanul Awliya is Sultanul Awliya. We have manners. We are not also saying that we are murids of Sultanul Awliya. Our Shaykh is his murid. Just as everyone may belong to the king in the kingdom, but nobody can say, yes, I'm directly under the king, and the king is giving me a special attention because I am in his kingdom. The king has Sadri Azam. The king has wazirs. The king has ministers. And it goes down from the ministers to the top people to all the way down. That is how the protocol it is working. People understand that in dunya, elections coming up is democracy, correct? Democracy, hypocrisy. But you don't find that equality in your workplace. You don't find that equality between you and your manager or your boss. You cannot say now to your boss, well, we're living in a democracy, we're all supposed to be equal. Why you have to sit at that desk and why I have to work? Let me sit over there. You sit over here. We are free. You speak, I speak. You give orders, let me give orders too. No. People understand it does not work in dunya. Why do you think it's working in the way of Allah? Why do you think it's working in religion and in spirituality? Hmm. Wrong understanding. Wrong understanding, we have to turn our way back, take a detour, bring ourselves back to the main highway and the highway of our Shah, Sahibu Saif. Main highway, not any other highways. We are not following, oh, of course, so many now. Don't be surprised, you may hear people who has been with Shah Effendi saying, Well, no, I didn't give bayat to him, I give bayat to Shah Maulana. You may. Well, hear it from me. I didn't give bayat to Shaykh Mullana. Any one of you give bayat to Shaykh Mullana? Oh. We give our bayat to Shaykh Effendi. People may also say, well, it's not Shaykh Mullana, it's Shaykh Sharaf din or Shaykh Abdullah, or Salman al farisi or Hazrat Abu Bakr. Or why you don't say you give bayat to Holy Prophet directly? Oh, because <coughs> Shaykh Effendi is connecting us to Shaykh Maulana, so Shaykh Maulana is my real Shaykh there. They are also connecting you. They are connecting you, Shaykh Abdullah, isn't it? Why you don't say? Maybe some are saying, I don't know. Then there is Shaykh Abdullah is connecting Shaykh Sharafuddin. Shaykh Sharafuddin is connecting to 38, 39. 
all the way to the Holy Prophet والسلام, why you don't say it's just connecting me all these ones they're connecting me connecting me meaning I'm important they are working for me they're connecting me to the top ones why you don't say you're connected directly to the Holy Prophet simple that is the logic isn't it or to Allah isn't that what shaitan is saying I'm connected only to you I refuse to bow down to Adam salam, to the authority they have put on me what is he who is that one he just came who is that one he's made from inferior uh, material who is that one same understanding same logic you are here you will hear may Allah not put us in that situation in that position these are very strange times and as much as we are holding on to the rope of Allah we will find safety and the rope is our Shaykh no one else you are free you may say you follow Shaykh Mevlana yeah, you are free you may go you may say you're following Shaykh Shah. you may say you're following Shaykh Abdullah you may say you're following Shaykh uh, Holy Prophet you may go then this association we are happy to be here maybe you are not too happy to be here you're such high level person then welcome to those who come farewell to those who leave we welcome everyone we never kick anyone out we don't say go but so many people they're uncomfortable and they leave definitely because this is a holy association this association that is supported by the Holy Prophet you're not going to find comfort here impossible you're going to find comfort anywhere else in this world run run anywhere you want to go people have forgotten there are those who have forgotten there are those who left too there are those who have forgotten how they left before and how shaitan was circling around them they cannot even find peace at night to sleep and they're begging and crying for Sheriff Andy to welcome them back Sheriff and he went out on a limb to pull them back in again and now they left that is a sign of hypocrisy they feel uncomfortable they don't like a jamaat you see them coming down first sign they always put their head down coming down here and they supposed to put their head down they don't want to see anything they don't want to hear anything they are just being here because they're scared they don't want to form relationship, friendships. Jamaat is not just sitting and eating and talking together. Jamaat is having your lives together to watch out, to care for each other. You see them not having that jamaat. Tariqatina soba fil min jami. Yes. Association, goodness, blessings comes from the jamaat. They don't like to be jamaat. Yeah, of course, you are free. You are free to go. You don't like to stay in paradise, you're free to go to any hell that you want. There's a big place out there. Strange days are upon us. Strange days are upon this Ummat. Ummat is still not waking up. His nation of the Holy Prophet والسلام, is still not waking up. We just passed the season of the Hajj. We just passed the Qurban. Still Muslims are not waking up. How are they going to wake up if the leaders are already sold? How are they going to wake up if the leaders they already bought? How are you going to wake up when the leaders, the scholars, those heads, they are the ones who is making fitna. We are not talking about Muslims who is backbiting nowadays so much. Muslims, murids backbiting. Backbiting and gossiping. Slandering and having bad intentions. Imagining illusion and delusion. Heaven is going to fall on you more. Definitely. Never are you going to find peace until you stop this backbiting and this slandering and these lies and this cheating and this entering into an imagination world where you're going to be suspicious of everyone. Never are you going to find peace. Muslims, we just finished this holy season. Where you say, Labaik, here I am, O oh my Lord. Where you say, here I am, to sacrifice for you. 
Here I am, I've left everything, and I'm going to your house as your guest, wearing my funeral shroud, leaving my family, leaving my wealth, leaving everything that I have an attachment to. Yes, dropping my baby. Some take offense at that. But Holy Prophet is saying, if Hazrat Mahdi calls a takbir, if you're holding a baby, drop it. They misunderstand. Of course they want to. Here I am, O oh my Lord. Here I am. I've left everything for you. You are my reason. You are my creator. My sons, my daughters. My father, my mother. They are related to me by blood, but you are their creator too. And you are the creator of my father and my mother. They love me, but you love more than them. Because you are the creator of love. Allah is not love. Allah is the creator of love. And you love me more than a mother loves her baby. And here I am returning that love to you. We just passed that. We also passed a few weeks before that. When the whole world, Muslim world, is boiling. Because they play into the tricks of the enemies of Islam, saying on the one hand, Prophet is Prophet of mercy and Prophet of love, and on the other hand, to show their love and their mercy, they are destroying. Isn't it? They get upset because some idiot just make a movie by the Holy Prophet, والسلام, insulting him, which is nothing that we've never heard before. We've heard the same things for 1400 years. Kafirs, they're always saying that. Definitely. Christians, they're saying that. Jews, they're saying that. Never you're going to find Muslims saying anything wrong, anything bad about Hazrat Musa and Hazrat Isa. We don't even say Moses or Jesus because we love them. You don't love them. You don't even have respect for them. We say Hazrat Musa, His Holiness. And His Holiness, Jesus. We never say anything wrong about them. We never say anything bad about them. We say these are all prophets. These are the highest level prophets. Prophets and saints, they are ma'asum. They are protected. They are innocent. They don't even uh, commit a sin, a wrong thing. We don't even say prophets make a sin. You do. You run to kill your own prophets. You run and you insult your prophets in your own books. You run on the one hand, you say you love your prophet, but on the other hand, you're doing the worst thing that your prophet is saying to you, don't do. But never are you going to find Muslims saying anything wrong about your prophets. 1400 years, non-stop, those ones who are unbelievers in the Jewish and the Christian tradition, there are exceptions always. There are good ones in there. But non-stop for 1400 years, always insulting and putting down and saying the most horrible things about our Holy Prophet ﷺ. But never are you going to find Muslims retaliating the way that you do because dogs will bark but the caravan continues. We don't stoop to bark at the dogs because we are humans. But Muslims, <laughs> Muslims 21st century now. Yes, you got so upset, isn't it? I hear Pakistan is saying, declare I love Muhammad wasalam, day, and that day of love turned to a day of complete ego, complete fighting and anger. Where is that love now? You just finished the Hajj, isn't it? You went to Mecca and Medina, the places where the Holy Prophet wasalam, was born and emigrated to, and he came back <laughs> to pass and he brought Islam from there and he cleaned the Baytullah where for 1300 years those ones following in his way strictly they have made that into a sanctuary into a garden of paradise and they've shown high love and respect to that place which in the past hundred years the Wahhabi shaitans they've done nothing but destroy so where is the love? did you go there? To say, I love Prophet so much. Why are you turning the Prophet's most beloved wife, Siti Hadija's house, 
into a toilet, into a public bathroom. Because Muslims are bought. Because they feel nice. They say they love Times Square. They love LA. They love Las Vegas. They love all these European capitals. They're looking at the tall buildings, the nice lights. They say, oh, we should have that in Mecca and Medina. So they see that and they say, I like this. They see the nice roads that's paved. It's not nice. There's no blessings in that anyway. They're seeing that and they're saying, this is nice. I don't care if they turn Hazrati Hamza, the most beloved uncle, the Holy Prophet, والسلام, that he used to visit his grave every Friday and talk to his uncle and weep and cry. I don't care that the Wahhabi shaitans, they turn that into a parking lot. I don't care because I have Starbucks here. Why I should care? So tell me now if Muslims don't deserve punishment. That they turn, like I said, the house of Siti Hatija into a public toilet. They turn the house where the Holy Prophet was born into a library and it's such a dirty uh, place where they put all sorts of litter in. The Hira mountain, the cave, where the Holy Prophet used to go for meditation and receive the first revelation there. They make sure it's turning into a dump garbage place also. In fact, right now as we are speaking, in case Muslims don't know, they are already making plans to destroy the tomb of the Prophet. They made it open. After this harsh season, we're going to expand Mas Masjid al-Nabawi to accommodate these foolish Muslims who want Starbucks. And yes, they want Victoria's Secrets. They're selling that. Huh? Because they love the kafir way. And they like all this, so many shaitanic architecture that they're putting there. Especially that clock there, that Holy Prophet said to us, I'm saying, watch the Ahir Zaman, the Dajjal. One of the signs, bigger signs, Dajjal is coming. You're going to see sharp buildings, tall buildings in Mecca, tall buildings in the Hijaz area. And they're going to be sharp like a dog's tooth. And you're going to see naked and barefoot Bedouins. And they are the richest people. That's what you are seeing. But Muslims, they're sold for what? For this, for the dunya. As we are speaking right now, they're making plans to expand the Masjid al-Nabawi, to destroy the tomb of the Prophet, والسلام, to dig him up, to dig up Hazrat Abu Bakr, Hazrat Umar, to dig up Hazrat Aisha is also there. There are others that are there. We're not going to enter into that. They say because it's all shirk. People are going asking the Prophet for prayer. Prophet is dead, they're saying, because they are dead. They are praying five times a day. They're going to Hajj every day. They claim they are the best of Muslims, but their hearts are dead. For what? To accommodate more Muslims to come. Because now they're having more money. We're having millions. Last year, 1.6. We're make, making intention to have 3 million to come, 5 million, 6 million to come, making it bigger and bigger and bigger. <coughs> but where there is no spirit and there is no blessing. So where are the Muslims now? This is known that they have always wanted to do. This is 2006, 2007. The same ones who issued that fatwa are the ones who is going around in Yemen and in Iraq digging up the graves of the Sahabis and the saints and destroying and burning them. So where are the Muslims now who say, we love prophets so much? Where are they? Where are their voices? When it comes to this, because now when you do this, you are going to be in the spotlight. You are going to have to risk something. That time they say, no, no, brother, don't disunite. Because they have to risk something, they say, we are all love. We are all Muslims. Let's just love each other. What kind you are. What kind of Muslim you are when you're declaring your prophet dead and you're waiting to dig him up. What kind of Muslim you are when you're knowing this and you're not saying anything. What kind of scholar you are. What kind of sheikh you are. What kind of imam you are. Where you cannot even stand up to protect him. But for your own dunya benefits, you can stand up to the kafir world, to make a show that you love him by destroying everything and planning.
playing exactly the games that shaitan want you to play. So where is our faith now? What is moving us? What are we praying for? MashaAllah, Muslims pray so much. What are you praying for? Murids pray so much. What are you praying for? Are you really concentrating, concerning yourselves that Allah has put value? Or are you concerning yourselves only what you put value? What do you put value? My work, my children, my house, my car, my job. Isn't it? What I eat, what I'm going to dress. You put value to that, huh? And you're calling yourselves Muslims. You're calling yourselves Murids. And you don't put value to what Allah has put value. You're not even shaking. Your heart is not shaking to say they're doing this to the Holy Prophet. Ah, ah, ah. Shame on you then. Yes. Astaghfirullah alazim wa Somebody asked me, uh, I'm watching your videos sometimes. You always seem angry. Why are you so angry? What happened? What's happening in your tariqat that you're so angry? Is there something to be happy about? This world is a prison. For a believer, this world is a prison. I've never seen a prisoner happy, jumping up and down. And this world in the 21st century, we have turned it into a hell. We should be happy. This is a school. This is a classroom. I'm not a teacher. Sheikh Effendi is our teacher. If you accept Sheikh Effendi, like I said, so many others accept other ones. Maybe these words are not for you. But this is where his authority is. This is where... His merkaz is, and either you're going to listen and stay, or you're not going to listen, and you say, I have no place here, and you have to go. No other way. If you stay, you have to listen. That's how it is. So, yeah, there's a lot of things, because when we look with the eyes of our Shaykh, with the eyes of the Holy Ones. Yes, Allah is not happy with the world. His Prophet is not happy with us. Awliya Allah, they are not happy with us. Why we should be happy? We are thankful. We are happy that Allah still sends mercy. Yes, we are. Don't get me wrong. Of course we are. We are happy for the mercy in spite of the, all the wrong and in spite of the... Yes, because we are conspiring. We are conspiring if we keep quiet. We are conspiring when we are supporting. We see so much evil and we don't turn our face. Islam is forbidding the evil and encouraging the good. That is what Islam is. It is a farce on every Muslim to encourage something that is good and to forbid the evil. Who is able to do that now? Not the sheikhs, not the imams. They're interested in something else, not the Jamaat. Because they're concerned about their jobs, their wives, their husbands, their work, their money, their debts, dunya. Yeah. So, this dunya, it has a value of less than a mosquito wing. Allah is not putting the value of this world. Allah puts more value on one wing of a mosquito. So what kind of value are we supposed to put now? We value the mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown us in spite of everything, in spite of us doing wrong things and pulling the curse of Allah to ourselves. Yes, we are thankful to our Lord for that, but we are not happy with how this world is going. We are not happy. We should not be happy. Faith is encouraging good and forbidding the evil. If you see something wrong, Holy Prophet is saying, you have to change it. It is an order. Change it with your hands. If you cannot, 
Change it with your tongue, meaning speak, give advice. These days you cannot even speak, isn't it? Who is going to listen? If you cannot, he says, then at least change it in your heart. But understand, when you change it in your heart, when you cannot change the things, when you cannot speak to make the person to change from a bad to a good, when you are just praying in your heart, Ya Rabbi, Turn this badness into a good. Understand, Holy Prophet is saying that that is the lowest level of faith. This is where we are. This is the lowest level of faith that we have. That's why, how can we be proud of the worship that we just did? We cannot. <coughs> In fact, we should say Astaghfirullah more and saying, Ya Rabbi, that disaster that just passed us a few days ago, Muslims, <laughs> forget about Muslims, Murids, they're not waking up, they're not understanding. They're not putting their heads together to become more awake, more aware, more serious. They're not. They're becoming more gaflet, more arrogant. You cannot be. You shouldn't be. You do that. You are dishonoring your shaykh. Definitely. These words are for me and for you. I'm in it too. If you think this is not for you, leave it. I will take it. But definitely, Allah is not happy. Prophet is not happy. Evli Allah, they are not happy. The angels, they are not happy. Do you have to be a saint to understand this? Do you have to be a, a clever, a genius to understand that even the earth is not happy with us? The air is not happy. The waters, they're not happy. The trees, they're not happy. The animals, they're not happy because we've made a mess of everything. Everything. This whole system that we're living in now is a completely shaitanic system. The foods that we're putting into our mouth, we have messed it up so much, it's not even natural. And it's poisoning us and our children. The water that we're drinking, we put so much things in there that it's becoming a poison to us and our children. We have poisoned this earth. We have poisoned the water. The intelligent man, the man who has a faith, is going to sit down and understand these things and ask himself, where am I in all of this? Where am I? What can I do? What must I do? The man of faith will sit down and ask himself these questions. Inshallah Rahman, we're saying, Sheriff Andy is saying that we have pulled ourselves away from populated areas to be up here in the mountains. Away from populated areas because danger and disaster and the curse raining down on those areas. But don't bring your dirtiness to the mountains. The mountains, they are clean. We're here to learn new things. We're here to learn good things. We're here to put away all the things that are part of our ignorancy time, part of our jahiliya. Maybe you say, I didn't know that was wrong, but now you know better, change. You'll only win for yourself. I'm not going to benefit. No one is going to benefit except for you. But we've pulled ourselves away from the populated areas to come to the mountains to run away from the dunya. Don't make your own dunyas here. That is the biggest mistake that you ever do. That even the angels, they're going to curse at you. To see, you're resilient. You're a disgusting creature. You're taking the place of so many that it's better than you. You're running away saying from this dunya to come here to live your life like a murid and you're bringing, you're making a dunya here? Don't make your dunya here. We're here as a jamaat. These words for you and for me. Wa min Allah tafiq. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you for the sake of our shaykh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant 
long life and a healthy life, a strong life to our grandchildren. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our Sheikh, bring him to higher stations and grant him uh, more strength and more light so that he can send to us more support to stay on this way strong uh, and with faith and with intelligence. May the wrong things change. May those ones who have deviated come back to the Sirat al-Mustaqim. May the fitna and the wrong things be away from our association. May we not be those ones who are causing fitna and confusion. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Evet.